The call pit begins on page 271, takes you through all of the action on this and how it works. And uh, there's a little lab. We're going to not do that lab. And then takes you through the final circuit on the bottom on 279 until the bottom of page 279, we get to the good stuff. We get to the crystal oscillator. Now, a crystal oscillator, as I was saying earlier, is the most important tool for any oscillator circuit you're going to run into. It is how all computers run. Without that oscillation circuit, without precise control of that sine wave, your computer will never run consistently. Now, if you're running Windows, it's not running consistently anyway. But if you're running a PLC, you want it to run consistently. You want that clock to be accurate. And a crystal oscillator allows for that extremely accurate clock. And as a matter of fact, if we talk about crystal radios, we talk about uh, some of the earlier clocks and watches, they were the first use of crystals as an oscillator circuit, and they give you a much more accurate, high precision, long lasting frequency output. And it's a very nice, precise sine wave. Now, in the crystal takes the place of the, uh, let's see if I can find it. No, it doesn't go through that in here. The crystal takes the place of the inductor. Essentially, you've got a capacitor crystal circuit. The crystal acts like a much more efficient inductor. It uses something called piezoelectricity, which is um, the ability for a little bit of crystal, if you squeeze it, it generates voltage. If you give it voltage, essentially it absorbs it and smooshes out and then reflexively bounces back and generates voltage back. It's a tiny little battery. And the book does a good job of describing that. There at the bottom of page 279, it says, and this is the first thing I'm going to highlight, I'm going to highlight the section on piezoelectricity. The crystal oscillator's operation is based on a force electromotive force squeezing the crystal, distorting its shape, and then the crystal squeezes back. So this back and forth contraction and expansion produces vibrations or oscillations. So that's a very, very important little section. That's how crystal oscillators work. The book goes through some very basic stuff on how to set up a crystal oscillator, which is useful, but they miss the whole point, which is how can you create a crystal oscillator circuit in real life that is a better high quality circuit? And that I've got a video on, which is a crystal culpits oscillator circuit. So the book really kind of goes through that. You're going to see that with a crystal and a capacitor, you really um, can create this oscillation circuit. Now, if you look at your Arduino, the Arduino's got this crystal in here, and uh, that Arduino's got two capacitors as well. So with two capacitors and a crystal, it you actually wire in the oscillation circuit and the amplifier is built into the Arduino chip to use that external crystal source. So there's some useful fun facts. The thinner the crystal, the higher frequency, just like a, the smaller the coil, the higher the frequency. If it's too thin, it could shatter. So your crystal oscillator could shatter. I've actually smoked my oscillator crystal in the past by having too high a voltage. And um, there's a couple different ways of tuning these crystal quartzes. And the most important point right here is used in an application with another LC circuit. And that's why you can use a Cole Pitts oscillator circuit with a crystal, and it becomes a very nice, accurate, stable oscillator. That's all, that's all I planned for, uh, for today's review.
Oscillators, interesting. We're gonna play with one, but the only really important oscillator you're gonna deal with is the crystal oscillators that you're gonna find in your computer circuits.